Hello everyone and welcome to the short video where I would like to explain how to start working with the Brome Control app, how easy it is to connect your Cirrus with your device, and finally I want to make sure that it's flashing at the right moment, so I would like to explain how to synchronize your RFS triggers with your Cirrus. My name is Urs Recher, I am photographer at Brown Color, and very first of all I would like to go to the studio with you and make sure that our Cirrus have the right settings. So, very good, here we are in the studio. Um, the four zeros are waiting for us and I would like to go through step by step now what we have to do actually to connect the zeros with my app. Um, to be honest, I've done some preparation before. Lamp number one, three and four, they are already in studio one. They already have their individual lamp address, lamp one, lamp three and four, and they already have the Wi-Fi function switched on. But so far I have done nothing with my lamp number two and I would like to explain now on my lamp number two what we have to do precisely. So first of all, I would like to switch on the Wi-Fi function. So I press the button and I go here to the function Wi-Fi, press the button again, it's flashing and I choose here on, confirm. And now the Wi-Fi sign here starts flashing, which means it's connecting to the other lights. Of course, it has to be in the same studio, so I press the button again, scroll down to the position studio channel, press the button again, and go here as well in studio one, like the others, confirm. So this is going to flash again, because now it goes to, it moves to studio one. It's an advantage if they have independent lamp addresses, lamp one, lamp two, so I have to tell this unit it's lamp two, so I press the button one more time, Scroll over to lamp, press and choose here lamp number two, confirm, and that's it. Okay, so all the four zeros are in the same studio, which is studio one. They have all their individual lamp addresses, one through four, and they all have the Wi-Fi function switched on. That's probably the best moment as well to make sure that later on they're flashing. So I would like to explain very quickly how to actually synchronize the RFS 2.1 trigger with your units. So I have to make sure that this RFS 2.1 is in the same studio as well. So I press the set button and I press it again until ST for studio is flashing. I go down to studio one and I press set again. And now the rotating numbers, the rotating display actually indicates that they are synchronizing. Once it stops, they should be firing. Perfect, that's all I want. Make sure whenever you synchronize your trigger that you switch on your zeros first. Have them all in the same studio and synchronize after this. Because synchronizing obviously means that the trigger is synchronizing to all the units. And if you add uh, other unit later on, you have to sync again because this might be out of reach, might not be found yet. Okay, we are definitely ready to go back to the app now. Okay, very good. I think we should be ready to go now. All my Cirrus, they have Wi-Fi turned on and they're all in Studio One, which means that they provide their own private network. The only thing I have to make sure is that my tablet joins them in the same network. So I go into the settings and I choose Wi-Fi options and in here I choose Braun Studio One. This tablet was never connected to a Braun Studio One, so that's why it asks me for the, the password and the password is Braun Control with a capital C in the middle. Whenever I go back later on to a Braun Studio One or to any Braun Studio I've used before, I don't have to re-enter the password. I'm only asked for the password the very first time I enter a new Braun Studio. Okay, so I'm connected and now I'm finally ready to start the app. And as well, the app obviously was never in the Braun Studio One, so I have to press the plus button. Um, Braun Studio One, yes, I want to add this, and now it appears on the screen, and I can choose my Braun Studio One. The four little squares I, I can see appearing on the screen, they indicate that all the four zeros are actually connected to my app now. Fantastic. So now I have the overview. Um, over my studio, the big uh, white number is the master. So when I change the power of the master, I can do this with, let's say, one tenth of an f-stop increments. When I use the small flashes left and right, I can adjust or change the power of all the lights in the studio very precisely by just one tenth of an f-stop. 
when I use a swipe, I can decrease or increase the power of all my lights in the studio by one f-stop very, very fast. Um, but of course, I can adjust the lights as well independently. And there are two ways to actually to recognize which light I want to change. In this situation, I can see the front panel. So, of course, I can identify the lights by the power setting, but maybe if I have, let's say, a portrait set up with a, with a hair light, I can't see the back side. I can't see the, the power indication. So, in this situation, I can use the cognition lights. These are these, uh, the colored lights just on, on top of the, of the Zero's lamp heads. And corresponding to the lamp number, they have an independent color. So let's say my backlight is the, the yellow light. So of course I choose here the lamp which has the, the yellow little square and I can very precisely change the power there as well. It works exactly the same way with the flashes left and right. I can make changes by one tenth of an f-stop. If I swipe, I change the power by a full f-stop. Okay. Below the power indication, there is another small number, which is in this situation uh, 2540 of a second. This is nothing else than the flash duration. So per lamp head that's connected to my studio, I can actually read the flash duration. This becomes very important when I shoot uh, very fast objects in the studio, when I have dancers, when I shoot splashes with water and so on and so on. So I have to make sure that my flash duration is short enough to freeze these movements. That's basically um, all you need to start working, but there's a lot more that uh, actually helps. For example, I can switch on and off the modeling lights as well from uh, the app. This is again in the studio, not uh, on the light side, but on the studio. I can switch on and off the lights uh, in the studio. Let's say the lights are on and let's say I would like to go for a coffee so I can put them into standby, so they are falling asleep. I can have my coffee. When I come back, I press standby again. They wake up, all the settings are the same. And for example, I can switch off the modeling lights again to save some battery and so on and so on. If I want to meter the light, I can of course press the test button to yeah, check whether everything is firing or whatever. There's one more button called more, and there's definitely more to be explained about the app, but this comes in a later video. Um, where I will explain all the functions that are hidden behind this more button. So you're pretty much ready to go, but until now my tablet, my device is offline, which means it's in this private mode. The private mode has a big advantage because I don't need any existing wireless environment. Whenever I shoot on the beach, when I shoot in the forest, I don't need any routers around. I can build my own private network and still use the app. But let's say today I'm working in the studio and maybe I still want to use uh, my tablet um, for online functions. I would like to receive messages. Maybe I want to check my mails once in a while. Maybe I would like to control the camera um, from another app or whatever. So I would like that my tablet actually remains online. And that's why we actually provide enterprise mode. To go into enterprise mode, I just press the gear wheel on top, choose network settings, and now we can see that we are in private mode. And of course, I change this now to enterprise mode. And now I read, I have to decide or to tell the unit whether it's a VPA or a VPA2 network. So in my situation, it's a VPA2 network, which is called Cirrus. Cirrus 3, yes, and I have to enter the password, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Done. Okay, and I press apply. Now I get a message that tells me that I have to change my tablet as well, of course, to the new network. Because as soon as I press yes, the, the units, they change to the new network but of course my, my tablet is still um, in the private mode, so I, I lost connection. That's why I have to go back to the settings, and here I have to choose Cirrus 3 network. Yes, This tablet was already connected once to the Cirrus 3 network, so I don't have to enter any password again, and I can 
um, start the app again. Now I have two Studios One that appear on the, on the screen. One Studio One, which is called Bronze Studio One, which was the private one we used before. And now I have a, a Studio One called Cirrus 3. And of course, that's the one I want to use now. And again, all the four lights are immediately connected. And um, now the, my tablet is online, but I still have the same control over my four Cirrus lamp heads. And now we are really ready to go working. I hope this was useful. As I said, there will be another video explaining many more functions like uh, sequences, like free mask, like alternate, like delay, and so on and so on. But for the moment, that's it. I hope it was uh, helpful. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.